all the best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bellar Entertainment and HD Nets Broadway Boxing presented by Mohegan Sun, live from the Grand Ballroom here at Manhattan Center. Tonight's fights are promoted by DeBella Entertainment. They are sponsored by Turner Construction, HBO Sports, and Everlast. This bout is sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman Ron Scott Stevens. The referee for this bout, Benji Estevez, Jr. And the judges for this bout, Joe Dwyer, Robin Taylor, and Ron McNair. This next bout, a 10, right, 10 round bout, I should say, in the junior welterweight division. Let's introduce the fighters. First to my left in the blue corner, weighing in at 139 and a half pounds, from Chicago, Illinois, with a record of 40 wins, nine losses. 20 wins by way of knockout, wearing black, with the Mexican color trim, he is Rocky, the Mexican Kid Martinez. And to my right, fighting out of the right corner, weighing in at already 141 pounds, unbeaten at 16 and 0, with five wins by way of knockout. The local boy out of Brooklyn, New York, wearing white with black and white trim, Holly, the magic man, Malinaji. So Paul Malinaji and Rocky Martinez are set to square off. 10 round fight in the junior welterweight division. Martinez has been a professional for 11 and a half years. He's fought for the world title three times. And he is really confident coming into this fight, Steve. He said, usually they give you three and a half weeks to maybe four weeks to train, but they made a mistake. They gave me eight and a half weeks to train for this fight. I'm ready and I'm gonna prove it tonight. Well, he's in shape. He's always in shape, but sometimes he takes fights on short notice. He wants to prove that he's using Pauly to get back into the ratings. Pauly's not using him to build a name on his record. Round number one, scheduled for 10. Alanaji in the gray and I don't know what color those trunks are. Gray and a little bit of black trunks and the lighter color trunks. And Martinez in the black. He's a native of Acapulco, Mexico. Moved to Chicago when he was young. And already early on, Malinaji establishing the jab. Feels more confident now that his right hand is healed after surgery. He feels that he can land that jab, score more, that right hand rather, score more knockdowns and become even more of an explosive fighter. There's punches and bunches for Malinaji. Finally pivoting out with the right hook to the body. Paulie's very fast, but not all the punches land. You have to, you have to watch carefully to see, you know, is the opponent slipping the jab. Now, what, what can Martinez do to counter that jab? Well, one is to throw his right hand. Another is to jab with Paulie, which right now he's trying to do. The third is just to smother Paulie, but Paulie doesn't have the room to land the jab. Nice three-punch combination, ending up with the left hook to the body for Malinaji. Paulie told us yesterday that it's going to be a rough night for Martinez. He's slow. And Malinaji felt that he's just too quick and too stylized for the older and slower Rocky Martinez. I'm very disappointed in Martinez's hair. He usually comes in through with red hair, gold hair. Paulie wins the hair uh, contest 10 9 first round. Malinaji continuing to jab to the body. 
And again, Martinez to drop his hands a bit. Martinez, a textbook fighter. Puts his hands up high. I'm surprised he's not moving in as much as he said he would yesterday. Well, he's a veteran, and it's a 10-round fight. He's taking his time, getting an idea of how quick Malinaji is, what he needs to do. You can see he shows a little bit of head movement. And for Paulie to be effective in this fight, he wants every round to be the same. He wants to land that jab. We'll have the copy box numbers to, to back it up, but he wants to land that jab several times each round, add the right hand on occasion, keep Rocky away from him. That's the key, because Rocky can't win this fight on the outside. There's a double jab by Malinaji, scoring big, and he hears it from his friends and family in attendance. He told me he sold 100 tickets himself for this fight. Looking good early. stats and uh, Malignaggi did take the first round, landed some nice jabs. Martinez is going to have to get a lot busier. Malignaggi hooking off the jab, circling Rocky Martinez. Martinez, so far he's been stifled, unable to get off anything early. Well, the speed is not just the hand speed that you see in the jabs of Malignaggi. It's also the foot speed. And that frustrates Martinez because he can't, he has to be set to punch. And he's following a moving target. Manaji now backing up, trying to counter, keeping that left hand down. Martinez, workmanlike, takes a jab and a right hand straight to the chin. Eats it and continues to come forward. There's another looping right hand by Malinaji. Backs up Martinez. Uppercut followed by the left hook. Malinaji now doing a good job when Martinez gets close. Malinaji staying his ground this round. Now Martinez yielding some ground. Malinaji slipping the hook and coming back with a right hand of his own. There's that speed. All kinds of hand speed for this young man from Brooklyn. Minute 30 to go in round number two, scheduled for 10. Junior welterweights. Well, you see Malignaggi carries that left hand so low. When you have the reflexes he has, you can get away with it. When you're 23, you can get away with it. But it's not the way you teach most fighters to fight. He's so quick, he can do it. And he doesn't get hit with the right hands. Alanaji keeping those hands moving. Jab to the body, blocked by Martinez. Now the uppercut missing, followed by the left hook. But Martinez gets nailed, coming in with another Malinaji jab. Well, he's bringing that right hand in different angles when he throws his combinations like he did right there. Right hand is coming from the side, coming straight up the middle, and coming under as it was there. And Martinez going backward, takes a sharp left hook from Malinaji with 22 seconds to go. And the second round. All Paulie Malinaji in the first two rounds from Midtown Manhattan. We're at the end of round two. Third member of our team, Brian Adams, has caught up with a very successful lady on her own, in her own right. Brian. The lovely Miss Hillary Swank. Notice you're here tonight checking out the fights. You were at the local Golden Glove last week checking out the fights. Are you a fan or are you just here scouting for a particular reason? Well, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to do a boxing movie, but I'm, I'm here because I am a fan. I came to watch Edgar Santana, um, who uh, trains with my trainer, who's training me for this movie. Um, you, you know who? <laughs> Hector Roker. That's right. <laughs> the one and only. All right. Well, I wish you all the best in your future um, endeavors. Thank you very and much. It's, just it's, enjoy the fights. I'm having the greatest time. I love it. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. All right, Brian. 
third round coming up through two 109 of Malinaji's 152 punches have been jabs according to CompuBox. Round three. And look at the punch stats. And Malinaji keeping a nice pace, averaging 75 punches around, most of them jabs, as we said. And again, Martinez has got to pick it up. It's not easy against a moving target to throw a lot of punches and have them be meaningful. He's got to find a way. When you're fighting a quick fighter like Maladaji that loves to use his jab, what do you do if you're trying to get inside and throw your other punches? Well, what Martinez is doing is he's trying to jab with Maladaji. And he's been, the, the punches he's landed in this fight have been jabs. He's landed some nice jabs. Jab with the jabber. Always a good strategy. Other than that, unless he wants to move his feet real quick and crowd Malinaji, there's not much else he can do. And you know what? He's not going to move his feet quickly to crowd Malinaji because his feet aren't as quick as Paulie's. Not a lot of head movement right now by Rocky Martinez. 33 years of age. Against the younger 23 year old Paul Malinaji. Malinaji not doing a lot of showboating early on as he lands the can opener with the right hand. He backs his way up. He's really focused all business to start this fight. No, no clowning. Uh, maybe we'll see some of that later. Paul usually loves to do that when he's got his fans in the audience. And clearly in New York he does here, but he knows what he's in with. I mean, he was kidding with us yesterday and saying the so-called experts see this as a move, a move up in... Uh, in class for him, and he didn't see it that way, but he knows he's in with a veteran. He just, can't get sloppy. Just landed a beautiful combination. Now the right hook flush on the jaw of Martinez. Martinez, the veteran, is being outclassed in this fight, and this time he leads with his head. A slight headbutt between the two fighters. Now Malinaji moving back in, still using that jab, which is basically coming from his hip. I don't know if it's too early for a plan B. Oh, oh a yeah. Yeah. Very nice job by Malinaji. Rocky's got to try something different because he's going to lose every round the same way, 10-9. And it'll be 100 to 90, I can tell you, the score already, unless he changes up. One way he might try to change up, try to mug ball a little bit, get real close, a little physical with him. Well, Mar just not close enough. Martinez is staying on the end of all of Malinaji's punches. He has not really gotten close. Sometimes you got to take a few to give a few. Martinez hasn't thus far. The end of the round. Ah, no punch. Malinaji continues to back up, keeping his, his uh, left hand down at his waist. You would think that Martinez would step to his right and come over the top with that right hand, followed by the left hand to the body. Malinaji, 26% of his jabs, but he's throwing so many that he's got to score with that punch. He's been scoring with that punch. And that in concert, well, that's a heavy jab right there. In concert with his combination punching, he's given him every round so far. Martinez trying to move his head, blocks that right hook. Martinez continues to go forward. Malinaji shakes out that right hand. You wonder if after having surgery and it finally healing, if it's a little tender against some live bullets here. Well, it seems at least that he's not scared to throw it. You know, after you have trouble with your hands, and our Brian Adams knows that better than anybody with four surgeries on his right hand. You could get very hesitant to throw the power shot with the right hand, just fearing injuring it again. Malinaji's using it. Is he throwing it as hard as he can? That's hard to say. Good jab by Martinez. Very stiff. Malinaji. Swinging from his back foot. Short hook. Pivots out of trouble. Malinaji punching down as Martinez tries to get under his punches. And now Martinez a little closer. See if he can make Malinaji pay. He hasn't been able to back him up on the ropes. This fight has been fought in the center of the ring. In that sense, Gus, 
Rocky is exactly the right type of opponent for Paulie. He's really made to order for Paulie because he just can't deal with Paulie's movement and speed. If you stand there and fight Rocky, he's got a good chin, he's been 10 rounds about 400 times, and, and he'll fight you, and he'll fight tough. But he's frustrated by this because he's not in a fight, he's in a boxing match. And he doesn't know what to do, he doesn't have the tools to counter Paulie's uh, speed and jab. The up jab landing for Malinazzi, followed by another stiff jab. Malinazzi does a terrific job of putting his punches together. We talk about the experience advantage, yeah. Martinez has fought three world champs, so fourth of the title three times. He's fought 298 rounds as a professional. That's, in this day and age, that's a lot. And he's been 10 rounds, 10 times. Uh, where Paulie said 10 rounds zero times. This will be the first time if the fight goes a distance that Paulie will go to 10 rounds. Eight seconds remaining. There's another beautiful combination by Malinaji. Clearly dominated. This is Broadway boxing. All right. Round number five from the Grand Ballroom in Manhattan Center. Paul Malinaji against Rocky Martinez. Malinaji with the lighter colored trunks. Martinez with the darker colored trunks. Ten rounds scheduled in the junior welterweight division. 140 pounders. And now Martinez trying to go over the top, but Malinaji just way too quick. There's a one, two, three. Third punch getting in for Malinaji. Pauly going to the body. And he hit him on the hip. Right on the hip. Martinez slowing down. That was dangerous because Martinez sort of turned sideways there before the referee intervened. And, uh, Rule number one of the ring, protect yourself at all times. Let's keep it clean, guys. Oh, look at that jab. What a beautiful jab for Paul Malinaji. Doubling it up. Now let's go to Brian Adams. I made my way around to Paulie's family and friends. It's kind of crazy. They can't seem to keep still. I actually have Daniel Jacobs, fresh off his Golden Glove victory, a real good friend of Paulie's. What do you think Paulie's doing right now? Well, Paulie's actually using his jab very well and being real slick. Okay, as you can see, they're real excited, and Paulie's setting this up very well to be fighting home. Now back to you, Gus. All right, Brian. Paul Malinaji has completely dominated this fight from the very beginning. Midway through, here in the fifth round. Close to a minute remaining. Well, I tell you, you couldn't have scripted this better thus far for Paulie Malinaji through five rounds. Winning all five rounds. The fight's going exactly as he pleases, as, as he pleases. He's keeping his distance, he's landing combinations. But one thing that makes Rocky Martinez perhaps different than Paulie's previous opponents, round six and ten, Rocky will still be there, still be bringing it because he's bought in ten rounds ten times. And he's a veteran. Now Malinaj is showboating a little bit with his hands up. Beautiful uppercut. Got through. Followed by a stiff jab, and Martinez finally lands a nice hook that backs up Malinaji. Malinaji felt that one. Here comes Martinez trying to make the fight rougher. Under 10 seconds to go in the round. Ready for round number six, scheduled for 10. Malinaji is averaging 52 jabs and 78 total punches per round as we take a look at the CompuBox box stats through round five. Well, what you need to see is that Malinaji has doubled his connects, doubled uh, Martinez's connects, and that's why he's up five rounds to zero, 50 to 45 on my part after five.
Kalinaji's confidence growing. After every round, now booking to the body. He is really, really sensational with that left hand. Now he lands a right hand over the top, followed by doubling up the jab. Kalinaji so boy. So quick. The only thing at this point, Gus, that can cross Paul is if he loses his focus. Everything else is going fine. He just has to do through from round six through ten what he did rounds one through five. Martinez continues to move forward, but he's quite often one and done. As soon as he throws something, Malinaji is out of the way or either giving him something back. Oh, now Malinaji holding on to Martinez. There's a chance for Martinez to fight inside. At 33 years of age, you just don't know if he has the gas. And that might be the first fight time off fight that uh Benji Estevez had to break the fight. That's a bad sign for Martinez because it tells you he's not getting close, which is where he needs to be. Malinaji going to the body. Martinez answering with the overhand right. Martinez trying to move his head and trying to get in. Uh, Malinaji just too quick on his toes. Look at his body as he backs his way up. Now he's starting to punch to the body much more, Gus, as you just pointed out. And that's a good idea. If he can get away with it without getting countered, because it's just going to slow Martinez up that much more. Moving right, grazing the chin of Malinaji. The end of round number six. Round seven, Paul Malinaji in the lighter trunks and Rocky Martinez in the dark trunks. Gus Johnson, Steve Farhood with you, and it's been all Paul Malinaji early on. And to this point, rather, Rocky Martinez has to do something to get Malinaji out of his comfort zone and make this fight more of a brawl. Yeah, exactly right. It really, he's just following the script right now. You know, you don't ever want to bend the rules or, or uh, advocate bending the rules, but he needs to get a little closer. Maybe, you know, stray elbow here, a little punch there right on the inside to, to maybe anger Paulie and to just get him off his game because right now Paulie's in a rhythm. And when a fighter with his speed and reflexes is in a rhythm, he's just not going to hit him. Now Martinez closer. Martinez has to really close the gap. Beautiful job, though, blocking that left hook by Malinaji, keeping that right hand high. Showcase for Paulie Malignaggi because he's doing exactly what he does well. The junior welterweight division is so full of talented fighters. We think about Toro Gatti, you think of Rawls, Ricky Hatton, the high energy. You think of uh, Miguel Cotto, a fighter more Malignaggi's age. You think of the left hook, the great left hook. Well, Paulie, you think of speed, jab, movement. And we're seeing all three tonight. Nice elbow, Paulie. Martinez has just not been able to close the gap on the feline quick Paul Malinaji. He continues to pop that jab out there. Uh, break, remote, you step back. The 104 remaining in round number seven, scheduled for 10. Anaji now blinking, may have caught a jab in the eye. And in the corner, works his way out. Ties up Martinez and now backs up. What you like to see as Martinez lands a sharp right hook. And followed by a left hand by Martinez. Now he's starting to brawl a little bit. And Malinaji is a game fighter. He's right there with him. 
Hey, Rocky might have to take two to land one, but it's worth it's worth the pain for him because that's about, about the only way he's going to win. Good experience for Paulie also to go 10. This is his second schedule 10, and he's going to have to go 10 a lot in his career, so why not learn how to do it against a fighter, a veteran like Rocky Martinez? This is Broadway Boxing. Round number eight, Paul Malinaji in the light trunks, Rocky Martinez in the dark, and the punch stats through seven. You know, that's actually promising for Martinez, 16. That's a high for uh, the fight for him. Still out fought by Malinaji through 90 punches. It's a busy guy. Martinez with a small cut on the right of his forehead now. Alanaji hooks off the jab and pivots out of trouble. And Malinaji kind of forecasted how this fight would turn out. He said that Martinez would be way too slow even if he was in shape. That looks like it's the case. Yeah, and, and it's not just the hand speed, it's the foot speed too. Rocky's a plotter. You see him plodding forward, left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. That's not going to do it against a fighter with the, the foot speed of Billy Malinaji. And what's frustrating for Rocky is on the occasion that he gets inside and actually draws Paulie into a trade of punches, very often he's out, he's out punched. So even when he gets to do what he wants to do, he doesn't get the advantage. He's just being out for in every which way. Uppercut really landing for Malinaji. That right upper cut was stiff, and now blood is starting to trickle out of the left nostril of Rocky Martinez. Martinez slowing all the way down in the eighth round. Alanaji told us that he likes being able to be healthy, A, and fight 10-round fights because he feels he can get more knockdowns in 10-round fights by wearing his opponents down. That is his skill. Well, as with, opposed to being a knockout puncher. Yeah, which he is not. But I'll tell you what's very interesting here. We saw Paulie smile before when he made Rocky miss. Malinaji hasn't taunted his opponent at all. He's not clowning at all. This is very unusual for him. Usually a little bit of clowning and taunting. I just think he respects Rocky so much that he's keeping a business. He doesn't feel he can get away with that. And what's the point? Blood covering the face of Rocky Martinez now coming out of that left nose. And traditionally, he has gotten a reputation for being a fighter that can bruise and cut easily. Rocky Martinez is exactly the prescription Paulie Malinaji needs at this point in his career. It's perfect. Just what the doctor ordered, because he's going, he's making Paulie fight 10 hard rounds against the season pro, and he's showing Paulie, and giving Paulie the confidence that he can go 10 against such a seasoned veteran, and that's important. Coming to the end of the round. <laughs> Start of round nine, 430 of Malinaji's 643 total punches have been jabbed. And you can see by Rocky Martinez Martinez knows that uh, he's been at the end of many of those jabs. There's another one right on the forehead. And Malinaji now continuing to steamroll past Rocky Martinez. Very important here in the last six minutes for Malinaji to remain focused, do what he's been doing. You know, his fans love him. They don't necessarily need to see him knock people out. It's just not his game. They know that. He is what he is, and you can't turn him into a power puncher. That's just not his game. If he's successful at the highest level, you're going to see a lot of W10 and W12 on his record. Naji on his toes now, starting to move. Good side, so much gas in the tank, and we are in the ninth round. 
does a thousand sit-ups a day. Gladys. Yes, he does. As you do. You know, oh, I and, wish. And I've done a thousand in my life. So. <laughs> you know what? We were talking to Paul yesterday, and uncharacteristically, he has not trash-talked or taunted or hot dog, however you want to call it, today. But that's what he normally does to his opponents, and sometimes. Is he gets a bad reputation, but off the or out of the ring, he's the best guy in the world. You love him. Exactly. But one of the ESPN announcers, I think it was Joe Tessitore, said one on one of Paulie's ESPN fights, if you just 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 judge this guy by what he does in the ring with the taunting, you wouldn't like him. But we know Paulie. He's a New Yorker, I've known him for a long time, and he's a charming and, and engaging guy. You can't help but root for him. Makes me feel old though. Look yes, at him, you know? he is in shape and young. And the hair, you know, I just, I don't know. 20, <laughs> 23 years old, it's a long time ago for me. He likes to bring attention to himself. He says that's his own personal marketing plan and promotion plan. Fight well in the ring and do crazy things. Sticks his tongue out at opponents sometimes. And there's that jab buckling. Martinez. The end of round nine. Gus, according to the uh, copy box numbers, Martinez almost outpunched Malinaji in round nine. 16 connects to 18 for Malinaji. That's that's as close as it's been, but this is a 9-0 fight as we go into the last round. And if you want to take a flyer on Martinez winning this fight by knockout, I'll lay you some nice odds. <laughs> <laughs> the tenth and final round in the junior welterweight division between Paul Malinaji, undefeated fighter out of Brooklyn, and Rocky Martinez, the veteran at 49 and 1 out of Chicago. And this fight was considered a step up for Paulie. And I think after this, he goes from being a prospect to a serious contender. Well, you know, it's it's a okay, subtle okay, step up yeah. because Rocky Martinez does lose. We know he's got the nine losses. And style-wise, this was a perfect matchup for Paulie. But nonetheless, it is a step up. Because if you look at Paulie's opponents to date, there wasn't anybody with the experience or the world-class competition of, of Rocky Martinez. So it is a step up. But that doesn't mean Rocky won't have to get better. I mean, uh, Paulie won't have to get better as the competition gets better because he will. Oh. And at 23, he can. All right, I got you, I got you. Come on, guys, let's finish tonight. Alanaji. Put on a show, come on. So cool and relaxed in the ring as he backs his way up. Martinez continuing to stalk. He has been pressing Malinaji the entire 10 rounds, but unsuccessful. Malinaji terrific at punching off his back foot. He's shown some new things, really going to the body while backing up and pivoting out of trouble. And there's that jab, that beautiful jab by Malinaji. As the fans start to chant his name. And Gus, for me, the most impressive thing about Paulie tonight, consistency. He's fought all 10 rounds the same way. He stayed focused. He's let his talents take control of the fight instead of trying to impose his personality into the fight. There's plenty of personality. He'll have plenty of chances to show that. He's already done it. But I got you. he's got to let his clean. skills take effect in fights. And right now, those skills are giving him a 10-0 win in rounds against a game but outclassed Rocky Martinez. 15 seconds remaining in the 10th round. The final round between Paul Malinaji and Rocky Martinez. And now Malinaji trying to close the show in front of his friends and family at his home. And that is it. Paul Malinaji, a very impressive 10 rounds here in Midtown Manhattan. Couldn't have been scripted any better. Excellent win. This is Broadway Boxing.
And the final punch stats, Paul Malinaji throwing 131 punches, landing 225, that's 27%. Martinez throwing 389, landing 118. And it's time for the decision. Here's Sid Rosenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Joe Dwyer scores the bout 98 to 92. Judge Ron McNair scores the bout 99 to 91. And Judge Bob Gilson scores the bout 99 to 91 as well. The winner by unanimous decision goes to 17 and 0, remains unbeaten, Brooklyn, New York's Pauly the Magic Man Malinaji. So Paul Malinaji improves to 17 and 0 with a very impressive. 10 round unanimous decision over Rocky Martinez. If this was considered a step up for Malinaji, he is definitely ready to take even bigger steps forward in his young career. And the magic man, Paul Malinaji, is standing by with our Steve Farhood. Paulie, everything you're about, I think you showed in that fight. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm about all about boxing skills, man. I'm always learning, I'm learning in the gym to perfect my skills. And I think I had to show a lot tonight. Rocky's a tough cookie, man. And he just kept coming, forced me to show a lot of things. And my first time going 10 rounds, uh, I appreciate that Rocky took me to 10 rounds. So I could, it was a good learning experience for me. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing it again, man. 10 rounds, <laughs> one more time. The only thing we didn't see from you was any clowning, any taunting. Was it because you respected Rocky so much? Yeah, I mean, uh, you're going to see uh, I'm more mature the better the opponent is, I guess. Uh, when, when I'm clowning a lot, it means I've really lost respect for my opponent. Uh, and Rocky never allowed me to do that because he, he was in my face the whole fight. So forced me to uh, be alert at all times. Now, you were, you were kidding with us yesterday. You were saying the so-called experts said this was a step up for you and that you didn't feel that way. But nonetheless, you went 10 against a veteran. Where does this put you right now in the junior welterweight picture? Uh, I, I feel like one of the best prospects out there, man. you got to put me among the elite prospects, not just in the junior welterweight division, but in boxing. The Magic Man is here to stay, man. A lot of people don't want to give me that respect. I don't know what it is. Maybe they see this pretty boy who likes to clown around, and they just choose not to see the skills. But the skills are here. And I, I'm going to keep showing them, man. I'm going to keep shutting up the big mouths that are there that don't believe in me. And when I take out the big names, I guess then, then we'll have to see how, how everybody uh, reacts then. Sometimes those big mouths include the commentators. Let's take a look at our Mohegan Sun highlights from this fight, Paulie, talk us through what you're doing here. Well, basically, I was just trying to show him that uh, with my hand speed, he wasn't going to be able to do what he wanted. I was trying to dictate with the speed, but he has a slow jab, but it's a, the timing of it was throwing me off a little bit. I was looking to literally counter his jab, but a lot of times I wasn't able to because he, he throws it off of a different rhythm. It's slow, but it's deceiving. So uh, I couldn't really get the counters off of his jab like I wanted to. But I, uh, nonetheless, you see me throwing the right hands over here. I was just trying to show him that with my speed and ring generalship, he, he wasn't going to be able to dictate how he would like, he would have liked to. Now, we saw a lot of right hands in combination from you. There's one right there on the top of the head. Your right hand has been a source of problems for you. How is it right now, and how did it feel during the fight? Actually, for the first time in a long time, it really doesn't bother me at all, Steve. I mean, it, it feels 100%. I don't think this blood is from me, to tell you the truth. It's on both <laughs> hand wraps. Probably one from the gloves I was wearing because Rocky was bleeding. But my hand feels perfect, man. Uh, for the first time in a long time, I didn't bruise it or hurt it at all, man. I finished the fight, and I don't feel any pain. So I'm real happy about that. Paulie Malinaji, 17-0, a junior welterweight to watch. Let's go back to Gus at ringside. <laughs>